Hello, and welcome to this Beginning Engineers video. Today, I'm going to be talking about plastic injection molding. What is plastic injection molding? Injection molding is a manufacturing process that produces parts by injecting hot, melted material or multiple materials into a mold. It can be done with a variety of materials, but plastics are the most common ones used. Usually when people say injection molding, they're referring to plastic injection molding. Plastic injection molding is used to make packaging, bottle caps, automotive parts, plastic furniture, containers, and many, many more things. For plastic injection molding, the plastic generally starts as pellets, as you can see in that picture there. So here is a very general breakdown of the process to injection mold something. So you have your plastic granules, your pellets you saw in the picture before, they get fed into a hopper, at which point a reciprocating screw moves them along and they are heated, so they begin to melt. They are then sprayed through a nozzle into a mold cavity and then into a mold, where they are clamped down and they take the shape of the mold. Seconds later, a part is produced that has the shape of the mold. And I wouldn't call it clamping so much as I would call it pressure. A certain amount of pressure is applied so that the plastic holds the shape of the mold. Here is some more process info. A shot is the volume of plastic needed to fill the mold. Plus you want an additional amount to cover shrinkage when the part cools and leave some in the screw to hold pressure. If the screw that feeds the melted plastic into the cavity runs out, you're gonna have pressure issues. Generally, the mold is filled in less than a second. The finished part has several marks on it when it comes out. It doesn't just come out as a perfect part. It has a parting line part from where the two halves of the die meet. You have the sprue, you have gate marks and ejector pin marks. There are many different tolerances that come into play and can make a part out of spec. But if you have a good tool designer, and a good machine designer and a part designer, you can minimize these differences. It's a simple overall process, but it can be very complicated in practice. In the top picture, you kind of see the path that gets to the cavity. You have a sprue, that's what the plastic first flows through. Then you have the runners that take it almost to the part cavities, and then to get into the part cavities, you have something called gates. So all that, the whole entire path that gets to your parts, that becomes plastic as well. Then you have ejector pins that help you push out the parts. Additional info. Cavity tools are generally called molds or dies. Um, in my experience, I hear them called dies more often than molds. A good design will lead to the part remaining in one half of the die, the half that has the ejector pins, while the gates, sprue, and runners will be with the other half of the die. There's a lot of common problems that can occur when molding a part. Blistering, burn marks, color streaks, delaminations, flash, also known as burrs, short shot, and warping are just a few types of problems. But luckily, some of these more common problems generally have common root causes, and a lot of it lies in the temperatures are incorrect, or the pressure is incorrect. Any injection molding machine operator is going to be very familiar with these problems and will adjust their machine appropriately. Tolerances are generally around half a millimeter, so pretty accurate. The images on this slide show a die in the injection molding machine and out of the injection molding machine. Dies are very heavy and difficult to handle, so always use proper equipment and get help when needed. Even for tiny parts, the dies can be very heavy. On the first slide, I showed part of a die that was used to make a Lego. I'm sure that die would still be very difficult to move around. Thank you for watching this brief introduction into plastic injection molding. If you like the video, please subscribe. I'm trying to do four or five of these videos a week. If you would like to see any specific videos, please request them. I hope you now know the basics of plastic injection molding. Have a good day.